Monsanto Company, the manufacturer of Roundup, spent years erroneously advising farmers to exclusively use ever greater quantities of Roundup to control the weeds in their fields. And for years, farmers listened. Meanwhile, these weeds were receiving evolutionary pressure to select for a trait of resistance to Roundup. The Roundup resistant trait is now dominant in weeds growing in many areas of the country. The introduction of genetically engineered plants is regulated by the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service of the USDA, pursuant to its authority under the Plant Protection Act. Where, uh, where was the USDA while a wheat problem that imperils modern agriculture practices was developing? In courtrooms across the country, USDA has been rebuked for having unreasonably and arbitrarily dismissed the environmental consequences of deregulating genetically engineered crops. In some cases, federal judges have found that the USDA could produce no written record that it had ever considered the impact on farmers. Thus, a federal district court invalidated USDA's decision to deregulate Roundup Ready alfalfa. The USDA is now awaiting further directions from a federal judge before taking further steps to consider whether and on what terms to deregulate this crop. Since taking office, Secretary Vilsack has promised that the new administration would take a fresh look at biotech crop policy. But the biotech industry isn't waiting for new policy. Chemical industry giants such as Dow, BASF, and uh, Sagenta are plowing forward with new varieties of soy, corn, and cotton. They're already asking USDA to deregulate seed varieties that have been genetically engineered to tolerate their own herbicides. In fact, the evolution of Roundup resistant weeds, while a problem for Monsanto, has been an opportunity for other large chemical companies. The immediate consequences of the deregulation and planting of these multiple herbicide tolerant crops will be the increase in use of more toxic herbicides. Dicamba and 2,4-D are more toxic than Roundup and their increased use can only be regarded as a setback for sustainable agriculture. In the longer term, the herbicide resistance of the weeds themselves could further change. If Roundup resistant weeds evolved in only 10 years, uh, could, could, um, could multiple herbicide, herbicide uh, resistant weeds be far away? I'm going to ask that question again. If Roundup resistant weeds evolved in only 10 years, could multiple herbicide resistant weeds be far away? Indeed, several species of weeds already exhibit multiple herbicide resistance. The development of, multi, of, multi, of more multi-herbicide resistant weeds poses a very serious threat to agriculture in the United States as we know it. The increased expense for mechanical and hand labor to remove herbicide resistant crops on today's colossal farms could be cost prohibitive, potentially wreaking havoc on modern farming. Until now, the USDA has deregulated without condition every herbicide resistant seed variety that industry has produced. Will that pattern continue in the future? Does the USDA have the legal authority to attach conditions and restrictions or even to block the commercialization of genetically engineered herbicide resistant crops? Will that agency use that authority? Farmers have a long term investment in their chief asset, their land. Chemical companies operate on a shorter horizon. Nature's reaction to farm practices since the introduction and marketing of genetically engineered herbicide resistant crops has created a temporary opportunity for chemical companies, an opportunity they will pursue at the long term expense of the nation's farmers. Now more than ever, farmers need a Department of Agriculture that takes care to preserve and protect the farming environment for generations to come.